This is the battleship Missouri. 2nd September 1945, she was anchored in Tokyo Bay. And it was at this exact spot that representatives, first from the Empire of Japan and then the various allied nations, applied their signatures to the documents which signified the unconditional surrender of Japan. Let us pray that peace be now restored to the world and that God will preserve it always. These proceedings are closed. That this took place aboard Missouri was alone sufficient to cement her place in history books. But she also earned her place through her service record. From the early 1920s until the late 1930s, the United States of America didn't lay down a single new battleship. According to the Washington Treaty of 1922, on limiting naval armaments, the naval superpowers declared a break in building battleships. The main strike force of the US Navy of that period consisted of the so-called standard battleships that entered service during World War I and immediately after it. So the, the battleships we had in the 30s were left over from World War I, and the Navy was still using them as the centerpiece of the fleet. All right, the grand scheme was still there was going to be this big, decisive fleet engagement, just, just like in um, Jutland in World War I. So battleships were still the core of the fleet. After Japan had cancelled all agreements on limiting naval armaments in 1936, the break was over. The standard battleships required support from the corresponding fast capital ships in order to successfully counter the upgraded Japanese battlecruisers. So when we would do our war gaming, this is before World War II, war gaming would be against Japanese, for example, Congo-class uh, battleships. And uh, so, yeah, that was, uh, that, that, was, that was the perceived threat in the future would be Japan, the Pacific. All right, so in the 30s, the US did have some intel on what the Japanese Navy was building, constructing. Some of it was good, some of it we found out later on was very, very false. Uh, there were some decisions made in the design process for the, say, the North Carolinas and the South Dakotas prior to the Iowas, based on some of that intel. In late 1937, early 38, intelligence reports started to indicate that the U.S. outmatched Japan so strongly in conventional battleships that the U.S. Navy could now indulge itself in a long-held goal, development of a fast battleship. In June 1938, the technical and performance requirements for designing such a ship with a new specially designed main gun were approved. The order to construct the first two such ships was made the following year. Later in 1940, a second pair of battleships was ordered, Missouri and Wisconsin. Specifications of USS Missouri. Total displacement, 57,540 tons. Length, 270.5 meters. Beam, 33 meters. Draft, 11 meters. Armament. Primary armament, nine Mark VII guns in three triple turrets. Caliber, 406 millimeters. Dual purpose artillery, 20 Mark XII guns in 10 coaxial Mark 28 turrets. Caliber, 127 millimeters. Anti-aircraft armament, 20 quadruple Bofors guns Mark I. Caliber, 40 millimeters. 49 Oerlikon Mark IV autocannons. Air group, three Vought OS-2U Kingfisher float planes. Armor. Main belt, 307 millimeters. Main turrets, 184 to 476 millimeters. Conning tower, 184 to 440 millimeters. Main armor deck, 153 to 179 millimeters. Propulsion, four geared turbine engines with eight turbines produced by General Electric. Eight boilers produced by Babcock and Wilcox. Power, 212,000 HP. Maximum speed, about 33 knots. Cruising range, about 20,000 nautical miles at a speed of 15 knots. 
By the end of World War II, the United States had become an undisputed leader in the area of naval radio electronic armament. Thus, the radio location means of the Iowa-class battleships were the best in the world. Missouri was equipped with the most advanced radars for detecting surface and airborne targets. Many of the radars were parts of fire control systems for artillery guns of all calibers. The Japanese uh, did not have the, maybe that technological edge, but they were terrific night fighters and uh, so if they knocked out our higher tech fire control radars, uh, we were somewhat at a disadvantage. So, so that there was a little bit of a evolution, of course, uh, to improve all that. I think they finally did. The Japanese had great optics, and they had the best night optics in the world. All right but the best optics won't lay up against the smoke screen. A lot of times our guys would lay a smoke screen, the radar directed fire control could see right through it. The Japanese couldn't do anything except scatter or try to punch through the smoke screen to get in, get in closer and fight. So took away their advantage. The Montana project that was intended to replace the standard battleships was being developed almost alongside Iowa. The basis for Montana was taken from the South Dakota class battleships. But as a result, a project of a battleship with a displacement of more than 70,000 tons was approved and ordered. Montana's artillery armament was more powerful than that of the Iowa-class battleships by a third, 12 main guns instead of nine. The ship had to pay for that with a lower speed, 27 knots. The order for construction of the Montana-class battleships was issued in May 1942 but already in 1943, the order was canceled. Thus, the Iowa-class battleships became the last battleships in the US Navy. Building an Iowa-class battleship is not a trivial exercise, but it was still something well within the capability of American industry. The entire process of building a ship from laying the keel to its introduction into service would take about two and a half years. And so it was that in early of 1945, USS Missouri, the last of the Iowas, arrived in the Pacific Ocean. Following the Battle of Midway, in which the Americans won their first victory, the Japanese shifted to defensive actions, and the balance of forces immediately moved to the US side. By 1943, the Americans had managed to replenish their losses and organize their wartime production. The position of the Japanese at sea was becoming increasingly desperate, so they decided to take extreme measures. In 1945, the kamikaze had become the Japanese weapon of choice to strike against American capital ships, the aircraft carriers and battleships. And in order to stop somebody who is deliberately trying to plow themselves into your ship, you need all the firepower you can get. As a result, Missouri was to be found taking an active part in defending against these attacks, and she suffered from kamikaze as well. On April 11, a kamikaze pilot crashed their plane into the starboard side of Missouri. The plane bounced off the ship and crashed into water. The ship received just minor damage. Five days later, Missouri was attacked by another kamikaze, but the plane was shot down by the ship's anti-aircraft artillery and crashed directly behind the battleship's rear. The plane's torn off wing crashed into the deck-mounted crane and temporarily disabled it. No crew members were injured during either attack. It was an extremely desperate time, and um, you know they sank over 30 of our ships, a uh, couple hundred at least damaged, about 10,000 sailors and marines were killed or wounded at sea. And the U.S. was not expecting them whatsoever. So it was very much a shock in the beginning because they were shooting at the planes and they were continuing to come in. The new enemy tactic required prompt counteraction. Aircraft carrier air support groups were increased in numbers. Each ship received four or five fighter squadrons instead of one or two. The anti-aircraft defenses of battleships were also improved. Eight Oerlike and 20 mm twin guns were additionally installed on Missouri. They started to do a lot of efforts on the ships by increasing all the anti-aircraft fits, putting guns everywhere on the deck that could fit them, 
They were overloading the ships with crew, guns, and ammo. They shoehorned in the crews. Habitability was thrown out the window. More guns meant the ship would survive better. So more 40 millimeters, more 20 millimeters. They put them everywhere. They could bolt them to the deck. The problem with them was is they wouldn't, they had to literally shoot the plane apart to keep it from hitting the ship. So they were finding very quickly that the little 20 millimeter anti-aircraft guns became very ineffective. So they were putting more 40 millimeters on ships, more five inch on the ships that they could. So when they came in, we basically filled the sky. Any gun on the ship that could bring the bear on the plane was fired on it, and they kept firing until the plane fell apart or hit the water. Missouri operated in the Okinawa waters until May 5. During that time, the ship took part in deflecting 12 daytime and four nighttime air raids. The ship's anti-aircraft defense crew destroyed five enemy airplanes on their own and six more planes jointly with other ships. Then came the day of September 2, 1945, when Japan signed the terms of unconditional surrender on board Missouri. The war in the Pacific ended. The American Iowa-class battleships were considered to be the state-of-the-art of the warship designs of armor and artillery, and the arrival of USS Missouri was the exclamation point on this type's development in the US. The ships did receive significant post-war updates. Following the end of World War II, the US Navy had more than 20 battleships. During the first post-war years, all these battleships were transferred to the reserve. The majority of them were decommissioned. As a result, by the end of the 1940s, the only battleship that remained in service was Missouri. There were good reasons for that. And the main reason for that was because our president was Harry S. Truman from the state of Missouri, who, uh, whose daughter, had christened the ship earlier in 1944. And he made a, uh, basically a declaration that as long as he's uh, commander in chief, president of the United States, that, that would, we would keep the battleship Missouri active. During the Korean War between 1950 and 1953, battleship Missouri completed two month long combat raids to the peninsula shores and supported American troops with her artillery fire. As they were trying to break out of Incheon. So she spent her entire first tour over there just bombarding, trying to destroy supply lines, trains, um, any artillery positions, troops in the open, anything our guys on the ground deemed too powerful for them to take care of. And because of the geography of Korea, a lot of stuff had to be near the coastline. Right? So the guns can reach 23 nautical miles or 26 statute miles pretty accurately. She got in pretty close to the shore. Good amount of stuff is within range of her guns. Right. So she destroyed a lot, of, a lot of targets over there. Fired a couple of thousand rounds from the main guns, uh, tens of thousands of rounds from the five inch guns. Uh, they closed that one out in March of, of 1953 and back stateside and and uh, went into training and upkeep cycles and so forth. In February 1955, Missouri was transferred to the reserve. However, giant ships with formidable guns were a perfect fit for demonstrating the greatness of the United States in the world. That's why, 35 years later, in the spring of 1980, the US Congress approved a proposal to reinstate and rearm all four Iowa-class battleships. On May 10, 1986, Battleship Missouri entered service again. Two things are going on. Our, our, we, our new president was uh, Ronald Reagan, and um, who was very aggressive about uh, rebuilding our forces and, and also counting, uh, because we were still in the Cold War, so um, uh, his, his goal, I think, was to end the Cold War, you know, and, um, and so basically to, to counter the old Soviet, uh, 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 Soviet Union, you know, the shipbuilding and the, the military buildup, decision was made to bring back the Iowa class. And with these Iowa class, had relatively lower use on them. Um, and although they were very expensive, they still decided they would, they would uh, 
get them back into service. That was uh, that was the prime reason why they they resurrected them after all 30 years or so. Missouri's swan song was her participation in the Gulf War during Operation Desert Storm in early 1991. For the first time in almost 40 years, the ship's guns opened fire at a real target, a well-protected Iraqi bunker. So they joined in the initial tomahawk strike, and then both of them cruised further north, got in close to the shore, and let loose with the guns. And that was the last time the guns were ever fired in anger in history. Uh, Missouri fired around 800 rounds from the 16-inch guns, and Wisconsin got off about three or 400 from her main guns. That was the last military operation for Missouri. In January 1995, the battleship was officially retired from the Navy. When the decision was made to turn her into a museum ship, many American states wanted to get their hands on the battleship of victory. The choice was made in favor of Pearl Harbor, where Missouri opened as a museum ship in late January 1999. Also, she's the symbolic end of World War II. The, the surrender ceremony took place on her decks. The war ended on her deck. The war for the U.S. started officially with the attack on Pearl Harbor. The Arizona was sunk that day. When they brought the Missouri in here, the best place they could think of putting her was immediately astern of her. They built, the pier was built over here prior to that. It was a perfect spot to stick her. So when they moored her here, they raised the, the um, guns up as symbolically watching over the Arizona and about three quarters of her crew that are still on board. So you get basically have the bookends of the war, beginning for the Ar with the Arizona, the end with the Missouri. You can win Missouri by answering the following question. When was Missouri put afloat? You must fulfill the following conditions for your answer to be accepted. Subscribe to our channel, like this video, make a clip with the correct answer out of this video, add a description and hashtag to it, and publish it in a public post on Twitter. Leave a comment under this video that includes your name on the social network, nickname in the game, and the server you play on. We will select the winner randomly and publish the result in the first comment under the next video.